Hello, Anin. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Jocelyn Donovan. I am the CPNP for Niwasa Kandaspin Tag. This is our new series called Early Motherhood. So in this series, we're going to be talking about recovery period, breastfeeding, and the first few crazy months of motherhood. We'll be going through some of the best practices for caring for a newborn and what you can expect from the recovery period. But I want to emphasize that all families are different and that you may choose to do things your own way. Our job isn't to police or judge anyone. I'm just here to give you the information so you can make the best choices for your family. Today, I'm going to talk about setting up the nursery and everything that you'll need for the first few crazy months of motherhood. Now, of course, you're going to need to get some things to be ready for your new baby. So I wanna go through a list of everything that you will need for those first few months. And I'm trying to do a bare bones list. So I didn't want to put you know, everything in the kitchen sink. I wanted to make a list of the things I thought were most essential uh, for caring for a new baby but if you want to add anything to that list please by all means go for it so for my minimalist list of what you need for a newborn if you are delivering in a hospital you will need an infant car seat to be released from the hospital with your baby and car seats are the only way to transport a baby by car safely so that's definitely big on our baby checklist after that, we need safe sleeping space, a crib, bassinet, or playpen. You'll need sheets for one, for those, the crib, bassinet, or playpen. I would recommend at least three, probably four. You will need a change pad, bum cream, diapers, and wipes, and those can be reusable or disposable. You will need at least eight receiving blankets, a light blanket, and a warm blanket that you would use in the stroller or in the car seat. You will probably want a stroller and a baby monitor. You'll need nail clippers and a mucus sucker, as I like to call them. That's the bulb that you squish and it sucks out mucus from your baby. You can also get the kind that has a hose attachment so you actually suck the mucus out yourself. Sounds gross, but you will do anything to make your sick baby happy, so it's not a bad thing to have in the house. I also like having baby medicine in the house just in case, so I like to have Tylenol and Motrin. Also rattles for playing with your baby. If you're breastfeeding, you'll want nursing bras and a nursing pillow. If you're bottle feeding, you'll need bottles and a bottle brush and formula. For clothing, I would recommend eight onesies for a newborn with a mix of long and short sleeves. Eight sleepers, five pairs of pants, but not if you have a summer baby. Two hats, eight pairs of socks and a jacket or a sweater. That's my bare bones list. I would also highly recommend having an infant bathtub so you can bathe your newborn safely. A white noise machine, I find this really helps with sleep time. A baby swing, because some babies are fussy and swings can be a huge relief. A diaper bag and a carrier or baby wearing equipment. In my opinion, you do not need baby towels those little baby hooded towels. I didn't find them very useful at all. I just used regular towels. And scratch mittens. Um, I don't really see the point of scratch mittens. Your baby might scratch themselves a little bit, but unless it's becoming a problem, unless they're scratching themselves so much that they're hurting, I wouldn't bother. My babies never wore scratch mittens. Now, ideally, you should be able to find all of those things secondhand. So that can be from a friend who had a baby and doesn't need that stuff anymore. Speaking from experience, once you're done with the baby phase, you just want all that stuff out of your house. <laughs> so um, seek out um, baby items from friends. Look on Facebook Marketplace. A lot of people sell things very inexpensively on Marketplace to get them out of their house. And there's also a number of secondhand stores here in Brantford. So I love Peekaboo, It's Almost New, Once Upon a Child, Megs and Clark, Value Village, 
Salvation Army, really any secondhand store is going to have tons of baby stuff, especially clothes. There's no reason to buy baby clothes new. There's already so many baby clothes out in the world. And why spend $10 on one onesie when you can get 10 for $10? So please, I highly encourage you to shop secondhand. Once I went to a secondhand sale and I got easily 40 pieces of clothing and a wagon and two snowsuits and hats and winter boots and I paid $60. That's how much you might spend on one snowsuit. So please seek out secondhand options. It's better for the world and it's better for your budget and baby will not know the difference. Now, finally, I want to talk about safe sleep. So according to the Canadian government, sudden infant death syndrome or SIDS is still a leading cause of death among healthy infants. The Ontario Prenatal Education website defines sudden infant death syndrome as the sudden death of an infant less than one year of age, which remains unexplained after a thorough case investigation. There are some things you can do to make SIDS far less likely to affect your family. Um, smoking during pregnancy is associated with SIDS, uh, so the less you smoke, the better. Smoking in the house is also associated with SIDS. And you can also um, practice safe sleep, which will drastically reduce the chance of your baby having SIDS. So the safest place for a baby to sleep is a crib, a playpen, or a bassinet. And it is safest for that to have nothing in it. So no bumper pads, no blankets, no heavy blankets, no pillows, no big stuffies or anything. Babies should always be placed on their backs to sleep. So when you lay baby in the crib, you lay them down on their back. And then if baby rolls, that's fine because baby will put themselves in the best position for their body, but it is safest to always encourage them to sleep on their back. Breastfeeding is also associated with a lower rate of SIDS. So don't know why, but that can be another way of decreasing the chances of your baby having SIDS. SIDS is scary. I was terrified of that when my babies were babies. I used to wake up every day and think, are they still alive? And it's not a good way to live. <laughs> um, out of 2,000 live births in Canada, one of those babies will have SIDS. So, so it is rare, but it's still scary. If you're worried about SIDS, if you have any questions, or if you want to talk to someone about your anxieties, please call me. I would love to help. I am deeply sorry if you or anyone you know has experienced infant loss. If you have, please reach out to the Pregnancy Resource Center of Brantford. You can make a free and confidential appointment by calling or texting their number on the screen. There is also the Bereaved Families of Ontario, South Central Region, and the Pale Network, Sunnybrook, you can contact for peer counseling. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you learned a little bit about what you'll need for your baby and safe sleep. And thank you so much. And next week I'll be talking about recovering from birth. Thank you. Miigwech.